I decided to call myself to understand why such a spectacular country when it comes to football is not able to comply with the human rights obligations when I know during my studies that Nigerians are very good lawyers, very good philosophers. How can we have such um, a huge gap in reporting? But after now four days here, I think that the reason is not in the capacity. It's maybe in the ignorance of uh, the importance of uh, this process, the ignorance of uh, the importance of reporting. Since the ratification of the UN Convention Against Torture, 20 years later, we have not um, submitted um, a report on torture, the state of torture in Nigeria, or whatever progress we have made. Um, so that report has not come in, and um, civil society is being taxed to develop an alternative report. Awareness first is key and the various um, laws that you have. But at the level of the grassroots, work is still ongoing by various organizations um, interpreting the, the various laws in local languages, radio and all of that, so, at, so that people at that level are very aware of this issue. But that is not to say that there is no room to do more. There is, uh, we need um, that um, continued um, engagement. Um, what we say is that it's a, it's a battle that we have to be consistent with um, so that each and every, um, every one of us in Nigeria can be adequately informed. Um, you and I that are seated here comfortably in, in Abuja, and then my grandmother that is somewhere at the, the village can actually, if her rights have been violated, she knows the mechanism, the platforms, the institutions, you know, to, to, to approach. So it's a battle or a fight that we have to continue uh, working on in that, even when we push out the reports, in our respective organization, by virtue of our mandate at CLEAN, the, in, the, in the discharge of public safety, in the promotion of public safety and security, that we will continue to follow up, we will continue to raise the issues um, um, torture that is happening in private spaces, torture that is happening in public spaces, and the security threats that you have that have sort of complicated the state of torture in Nigeria. In terms of having laws that frown on some of these issues, we do have it. We have the constitution that says we should treat people humanely. humanely. We have the constitution that says nobody should be tortured. Yeah. Uh, we have a constitution that says that nobody should be arbitrarily detained. We have a constitution that says nobody should be kept beyond 48 hours uh, after you have detained the person before you take the person to court and all the rest of that. So we have all that. But the issue is how do we ensure that these laws are being implemented? As you mentioned, so in 2017, Nigeria passed the Anti Torture Act. But many of the law enforcement agencies and security agencies are not even aware about the existence of this act. And yet that act is saying that if you are found to torture somebody, that you can receive up to 25 years imprisonment. It also says that if somebody is dead through that process, that you will also face the cons you know, consequence of being treated as murder under criminal law. So we also need to begin to look at these issues. So why will people be arbitrarily detained? Why will people be arbitrarily arrested? Why will people be tortured through a process of investigation? Because the same act, the same uh, you know, uh, uh, convention is saying that even if you collect evidence, but this evidence is collected through torture, that it should not be admissible. Our evidence act supports that, but yet it's still happening. To spotlight specific cases to draw attention to this issue. Well, we released a report last year, which we called Time to End Impunity, where we looked at the impact of some of the practices by the Special anti robbery Squad and some of the tactics we use in food torture uh, and actually detention, threats of detention, threats of torture in order to get um, those who they suspect have committed a crime to speak to them, but more importantly, to enforce a system of fear and intimidation in the society. But in terms of the information regarding how many people and all of that, that will really depend on what kind of access the government agencies themselves give to civil society organizations to implement this 
things that are happening. And that's why it's very important that what uh, the United Nations is doing to ensure that states can report on their own knowledge of the use of torture in their system, what they are doing to combat it, and how they are taking steps to eradicate it in their country.